We know that ingredients don't tell us everything about a product, but there is one chemical that's being put in our skincare that isn't being spoken up enough about. It is straight up poisonous. And it's a chemical that skincare companies haven't been fully labeling on their bottles. Dihydrogen monoxide is one of the most deadly chemicals on this planet. It is a main component of snake and spider venom. And guess what? It has been used at Guantanamo Bay by the hmm hmm during World War II, as well as by the hmm hmm hmm, which I don't want to say out loud because I'm not trying to get demonetized. Dihydrogen monoxide is straight up explosive, especially when it comes into contact with certain metals. Uh, it can cause major explosive reactions and greatly hurt people. And simultaneously, it is found in drain cleaner, it is found in bleach, and yes, they are putting it in our skincare, but they're not labeling it properly. What's really terrifying is what it can do to the human body. Again, people have died from dihydrogen monoxide toxemia. And it's also been found inside of cancerous tumor growths that have been excised or taken out of the human body. In the body, it can cause brain and central nervous system disturbances, what it does to your electrolytes and how your neurons and your muscles communicate with each other. And it can cause cerebral edema, literally brain swelling, which yes, has caused straight up seizures, coma, and death for some people. This shit is in our skincare product and brands are not labeling it properly as dihydrogen monoxide. Why is this happening and what does this mean for you and me? And why is this stuff even allowed in our products? It's because because dihydrogen monoxide is water. Dihydrogen, two hydrogen, monoxide, one oxygen. Who saw that one coming? This is a perfect example of fear mongering in the skincare industry and why the dose makes the poison. You see, just about anything can become poisonous if we take too much of it. And that's going to be very different if we apply it topically versus if we ingest it versus if we inject it into the body. And whether we put it into the bloodstream, into a specific organ, if it is put in little by a time or all at once. When we hear about a toxin or a poison or a chemical, that sounds terrifying. We want to keep our and our family safe, right? But when you realize that literally everything is made up of chemicals, water is a chemical, air is a chemical mixture, it starts to give new meanings to these things. Fruits, vegetables, all chemicals. And again, we don't talk about that in like regular day lexicon and regular day vocabulary. So that when someone says, oh, this is a dangerous chemical, it sounds really scary. And when it comes to poisons and toxins, people usually use them interchangeably, but they are different. A poison is something that at a certain dose can kill you. Now, again, if I have this much of it and I drink it, that's not going to do anything. But if I have this much and I inject it straight into the bloodstream or into my brain, yeah, that could absolutely kill me. A toxin is actually created by a living organism. Venoms in particular, when we think of snakes, spiders, bees, etc. But when we think of one of the most toxic compounds on the entire planet, botulinum toxin, we actually realize that many celebrities have this injected into their face on purpose. Yes, botulinum toxin is Botox. It's Dysport. It's the stuff that stops you from being able to wrinkle your forehead so those wrinkles don't set in. And what's ironic is that it's these same celebrities or public figures that are injecting Botox into their skin, but then holding up these products and saying, it's toxin-free! It's absolutely non-poisonous! Shut up, Gwyneth Paltrow from Goop. Stop it with the pseudoscience. Botulinum toxin can be very beneficial when used by a professional. It can even help with things like tea TMJ and jaw clenching, and even for people who have chronic migraines. But again, if you inject it in the wrong place or if there's too much of it, yeah, you could absolutely die. It is a neuromodulator. It modulates or controls how your nerves and your muscles connect. And all of these words in the cosmetic industry are often thrown around because a lot of these companies are banking on you not knowing the difference between a toxin and a poison and a venom and thinking that oh, venom-free, toxin-free, poison-free skincare is really good. Literally anything can be a poison. At the right dose, like literally. Full transparency and a little bit of a confession, I used to seek out only natural skincare because I didn't know better. I thought it was better for me because that's what was pushed down my throat or taught to me or perpetuated through marketing. I didn't know any better and I hadn't done the research or the studying as the fact that there is no real definition for natural or non-chemical in the industry. Because again, 
Fruits and vegetables have chemicals. Your pear has arsenic in it. And your apples potentially have cyanide. Technically, it's actually the apple seeds which contain amygdalin which release cyanide, but you know what I'm saying. Your apples and your pears are still perfectly healthy and safe to eat. But yes, they have ingredients that are considered chemicals so that when phrased in the right ways, marketers and companies can use these to sell you more products because you should use theirs that are poison free, not the other people's, even though the other people's are just as poisonous as theirs are, especially if you were to inject that product directly into your bloodstream. Arsenic, lead, mercury, you could go outside and find all of those in nature, and simultaneously, they are literally on the ATSDR substance priority list as being some of the most dangerous. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some brands out there that label themselves as natural or clean or chemical free that have really good products and I do use and I will continue to use, but it's not because they label themselves chemical free and that's inherently safer for us, it's because I know what's in them and they actually have really good products that give us really good results. And it's frustrating because I do think that when companies say, oh, this is natural or this is chemical free, it makes us think that other products must not be good, so we have to flock to them and look for this clean skincare, when in reality, that isn't justified. I've even been guilty in the past of saying, oh, the EU bans like 1,500 chemicals, America has only banned 33. Don't get me wrong, I definitely don't trust the government to protect us as well as they should especially when it comes to unregulated industries such as some supplements. But simultaneously, when you actually look into that, the EU has banned things on their list of do not put in cosmetics like rocket fuel. Like, I'm sorry, but that rocket propellant was not supposed to be in skincare in the first place. So just because they have a list that's 1,500 to 3,000 items long doesn't necessarily make it better than the list of 11 or 12. It's just something that shouldn't be applied to the skin or put in skincare anyways. I mean, rocket fuel, really guys, really? Did you know that technically dihydrogen monoxide, aka water, can be synthesized from rocket fuel? Yeah? Rocket propellant? Bet you didn't know that, but now you do. Actually, you probably did know that because you are a skin intellectual. It really goes to show that it's important to have these conversations and at least be aware. I am a critic and a skeptic, and I hope that you are as well. And we should find products with ingredients that work for our skin and understand how they work for our skin instead of just playing victim to these marketing campaigns and advertisements and, you know, Sephora's clean section because it seems better. Like, Sephora literally said they're going chemical free or they're like removing chemicals from their stores. And I'm like, okay, you're literally going to take every single product off the shelf. Elves? You're gonna take the employees out because humans have dihydrogen monoxide in them. Water? Yeah. Hmm, concept. But dihydrogen monoxide, this could actually be a really cool way to kind of vet companies based on bullshit ability. Literally email customer support and be like, hey, do your products contain dihydrogen monoxide? I think I saw someone do that on Facebook. And I think the brand responded and said, no, we have absolutely no chemicals in our products. And it's like, well, your first ingredient is water, so ha ha. So you Use that against your friends <laughs> and report back and tell me what they say. So remember to stay hydrated, drink some dihydrogen monoxide, and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.